welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we begin the book of Admitbar, Numbers, and uh, there's a phrase, there's a verse, a pasuk, that says, and with you shall be one man from each tribe, a man who is a leader of his father's household. And, um, and this pasuk is very beautiful. What it means, the clear yakar, he sees a redundancy in this pasuk, when it says that one man from each one man from each tribe, a leader of his father's ha household, he says that being the appointed one of each tribe is quite a distinctive position. Like what it's saying is like when you appoint a leader of one tribe, he's like above everybody else. He's the representative of everybody. So why is it necessary to add to this pasuk that he be a leader of his father's household? On top of it, not only of the tribe, but a leader of his father's household. And his in his Torah Haim, Horav Haim, Toito Shlita, explains this in a, in a, in inimitable manner with two stories. So one of the stories relates uh, the venerable uh, Kotzer Rebe, Horav, Horav Menachem Mendel uh, of blessed memory, and when he was a young boy. One day, a fire broke out and it burned his house down. And in those days, the houses were made of wood and they would catch fire in two seconds. And the, at that moment, the mother was only able to take out the children out of the house and run out. There was no time to take anything out. So uh, she was able to save, save all his kids, but nevertheless, everything that was in the house was completely burned. And then suddenly the rabbits and the Kotzker's rabbit's mother began to cry bitterly. She started weeping bitterly. And Mendele, who was a very, very special kid, uh, beyond any other kid, uh, went over to his mother and asked, is a house made of wood? that meaningful that one must cry incessantly over its loss imagine a little kid asking the mother like if a house is made of wood is it so special that you have to cry so much for it and she said no my child i'm not crying because of the child i'm not crying for the furniture i'm not crying for anything that's in the house i'm crying because in that house i had a special book uh, called the megillas yushin which is a geno genealogical scroll recording my, fa my family's distinguished, distinguished lineage. And um, now it's destroyed and I took my hijos, I took my, my lineage very seriously. I was a very, I, I'm very proud to be the daughter of this person, the, the granddaughter of this person. And so the son looked at the mother, Mendel, young Mendel, and he said, Mama, do not weep. I will write a new scroll for you in a distinguished lineage that begins with me. Don't worry, now this lineage was, is going to start with me. You haven't lost anything. And uh, he eventually became the progenitor of Hasidut that was unparalleled in its encyclopedic knowledge of Torah. He became a very well-renowned uh, rabbi. So the second story concerns Harav Israel Rishiner of blessed memory when his third daughter became engaged to Harav Horav David Halperin, who the Hassan's father, the, the father of the, of the groom, was Rav Yaakov Yosef. He was like gloating about his lineage, about his yihus. And the Rishiner, the father of the bride, politely interrupted him. And he said to him, to his in-law, he said, our attitude towards yihus, towards pedigree, differs from the common approach. He said, we don't believe like you. For me, it does. It really doesn't uh, impress me that you come from this father and from this grandfather and from this great grandfather all the way back. Like it, it means zero for me. For for us, what's important is the qualities of the descendants that are gonna come out from this union. I'm worried about my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, who they're gonna be. So, for example, my holy great grandfather, the Mesri Chermagit lauded his son, the notable Malach, while my grandfather, the Malach, revealed in the qualities of his son, my father. I too take immense pride in the success of my son. So this is what David Hamelech, King David, meant when he says, eh, succeeding your fathers will be your sons. What it means, this in Tehillim 4517, what it means is that 
hijos, abas, the, the pedigree of our fathers, our ancestral pedigree, will be replaced with the hijos banim, the distinctive lineage of our sons. And this is something really I think it's very important to, to, to look into this. It's the week before Shavuot, the giving of the Torah. It's, it's really talking to us about what are we leaving our kids with, what education are you giving your kids, what Jewish pride are you leaving them with. Uh, these two stories are, have that common idea uh, that the individual who stands at the helm of a tribe who rises above the rest uh, to serve in leadership position must be a man of impeccable uh, reputation, credentials. He must have Yehus Atmi, his own personal lineage. It, 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 what good is it that his father or his great grandfather was amazing if the guy is not good? It, 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 it doesn't serve him. Uh, what's important is that who he is by himself, what does he represent, and his own personal lineage, which warrants his ascension to a position of authority. Pedigree is very important, I'm not saying it's not. It's, I'm very proud of my grandmothers, of my great-grandfathers. The stories I hear from them like give me tremendous joy and tremendous pride to come from these people. But nevertheless, this doesn't make me a person that can relax and say, okay, because they were so great, I'm okay. No, on the contrary, because they were so great, I have to keep going. I have to keep up being even better than who they were because I have this huge responsibility on my shoulders. Like we, our generation, are being carried by shoulders of giants. Our, our great grandfathers, our grandparents, they went through Holocaust, they went through persecutions, they went through horrendous times. Nevertheless, they kept themselves Jewish. They came to countries where there was nothing. There was no mikvah, there was no synagogue, there was no language, there was no kashrut. There was nothing, but they kept their family Jewish. They, they struggled, they worked hard, they built communities, they built Jewish schools, they built mikvahs. And that's why we're here, because they kept going. So our job is not to stop. It's not to say, okay, it's done, they did it for us. No, if we stop, it's gonna end. So, so here we see one must himself be worthy of being the leader of his father's house. We have to be worthy of being our parents' kids. It's not the other way around. So perhaps we might view Ish Rosh Lebet Avodat Hu from a different perspective. I just, and he's telling us here that he read an inspiring, inspiring article by Haraf Aron Lopiansky, Shlita, in which he knows that each generation is judged on how well he has received our tradition from his forefathers and how well the members of the generation are passing it on. So we're being judged of how good of an education, Jewish education, Jewish values we're giving our kids. And he says that in 3,300 years since Yetzirah Mizraim, the Egyptian exodus, assuming that there are four generations uh, every century, we today are the 133rd generation since the leaving of, of Egypt. And if we are passing on the tradition to our children, then apparently we have received it from our pre predecessors. So imagine, we are today 133rd generation since the leaving of Egypt, since the giving of the Torah. And our question is, are we still passing that, uh, that uh, pride, that Jewish pride and love, that knowledge of Torah to our children? 132 Rosh Lebet Avodat, fathers have transmitted the legacy of faith. Imagine the legacy of commitment, the legacy of devotion. If it wasn't for our fathers and grandfathers, we would not be here. We would already be assimilated. Who knows where we would be? We would not even be Jewish anymore. So nevertheless, they always made sure to see to it that the next generation was prepared to step up to the plate when it was their time to lead. So every Jew must view himself as a leader of his father's house. We cannot uh, lie down under the sun and just let life happen. It's not gonna be. 
We have to teach it to our kids. We have to transmit the Mesorah. We have to give our traditions to our children. We have to have Shabbat dinners in our house. Women have to light Shabbat candles and the kids have to see this. They have to see their, pa their fathers doing Kiddush. They have to see that Friday night is a special night. Saturday day is a special day. If you don't give this to your kids, I don't know what's gonna happen to your grandchildren. So this is the, the message I want to give you this week with the parasha that we should never forget who we are. We should always remember, we should always carry ourselves with pride, with Jewish pride, and never forget that Jewish people are just different. We're different from everybody else. We're not the same. And it's okay. We don't have to be like the rest of the world. We have our own instinct, divine and unique way. And it brings so much to the world. This idea was uh, aptly expressed by a secular Jew. His name was Benjamin Disraeli. And Benjamin Disraeli was first Earl of Beaconsfield. Uh, he was a British statesman of the Conservative Party who twice served as a Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And this Benjamin Disraeli, uh, he was born a Jew, but nevertheless, he was baptized as a Christian. And uh, one day, there was this guy, this Catholic politician uh, from the Irish uh, government, and he made a, he made a negative remark to uh, Israel's Jewish lineage. And the prime minister replied to him, yes, I am a Jew, and when the ancestors of the right honorable a gentleman were brutal savages in the unknown island, mine were priests in the temple of Solomon. So what he was telling him is that he's proud to be a Jew and that when his ancestors were brutal and they were savages, the Jewish people were priests in the holy temple. They were serving God, they were learning Torah, they're people of the book, they're people who bring light into the world and they're also, um, a representation of Hashem in this world. That's what we do. We reveal Hashem through our mitzvot and through our, our, our Torah learning. And, uh, and we are here to bring light unto the nations. That's our job. So I wish you a beautiful week. A Hag Sameah. May you be filled with the light of Torah, with the knowledge of Torah. May you live Torah. May you breathe Torah. And, and in that way, you for sure will live a little higher. Thank you.